Hello. <laughs> Don't push yourself. Hey. Yeah. What in the? Fancy a bit of it? Sleep. No, you're all leaving tomorrow, right? I'll be cheering for you. So I. I. I just. Oh no! I promised Miss Fabian I wouldn't cry. Oh, it's all right. You don't have to worry. Papa was trying to stop a bad man, you said. And that's what you're all doing too, isn't it? Please come back home safe. I'll be waiting here as long as it takes. Wait for me. <sighs> yep, I'll be waiting. The next time I see you again. Can you tell me more about the outside world? This one's important. I never got a chance to say this to Papa. So... Captain, may I have a moment? Good night. I was hoping for a chance to speak before we set out. Since our meeting, I've done nothing but impose on you. Now, you risk your very life for this cause. It is no easy burden. It pains me to see. When I think of how this may yet save His Highness, I lose sight of all else. Such disregard ill becomes me. You truly are devoted to him, aren't you? I suppose I am at that. A guiding oath of twelve years is not easily cast aside. But that book, we met once before, on a carriage bound for the capital. Do you recall? it. 
I do. My apologies. I thought only to minimize casualties one way or another. So, tis a novel envisioning an ideal world. Curious to see a utopian novel these days. I'd thought them long since banned. Ah, you needn't worry. I've no intention of taking it from you. I've sometimes wondered why such books were forbidden. Rumors say the Sanctists objected to their contents. Yet I wonder, how could a simple book have possibly stunned them so? Do you mind if I read a passage or two? So, it is a fiction written as if a personal account. This chapter seems to concern the system by which the nation's leader is decided. In this country, one cannot become even a statesman, much less sovereign, without the consent of the people. Those who aspire to statecraft must first solemnly swear before the people what they will do in service of their country. Should they earn title but break their word, they are denounced and stripped of power. Such is the authority of the people. In this way, it is the people who are the land's true king. Quite the opposite of our own country. Now I see why our upper echelons would abolish such texts. Had our lands embraced such accountability, perhaps His Royal Highness would not have suffered such a fate. No. As a knight, it's not my place to say. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. Oh, I suppose. Tis not so bad to dream now and then. It takes power to walk the path of our dearest hopes. Perhaps that is the purpose of this newfound strength. My dearest dream. Tis to save His Highness, even at the cost of my life. Nothing more. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Juna! Lady Juna! <laughs> Even I'm feeling the heat. Well, I suppose it's time to fan the flames. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to the inauguration of the Tournament for the Throne. For the first time, the crown is anyone's to claim, as long as the aspirants can complete three grueling challenges. Wow, a Sanctus Crier. He's perfect for this. Let's discuss the venues. We kick off in the west, in the Pearl of the Coast, the Principality of Oceania's harbour city capital, Port Brylehaven. 
there, they face their first challenge, the exhibition of the brave. Each contender must bring back the head of a monster, a mark of their prowess and courage. Next, our would-be monarchs head east. Upon the misty peaks, we arrive in the principality of Montario's beautiful city of faith, Alterbury Heights. And finally, our heroes make their well-deserved return home to Grand Trad. But first, let's do introductions. It's time to meet those risking their lives for the crown. Closest to the throne, I know him, you know him. It's Sanctism's one and only 78th Sanctifex, his eminence, Forden! Victory to Sanctifex Forden! I claim no great ambition, nor any heated calls to action. All I wish is to restore order for our people and to safeguard our land from the threats beyond. This chaos we face is but one of God's many trials. Let us restore our kingdom's glory together! Moving right along, we come next to His Eminence's champion, the very spear in his hand, the warrior monk captain of the Crown Theocracy, Master Gido. I come before you only in loyal service of His Eminence. I relinquish the throne to him gladly. But those who would seize the crown by force, I will teach you to fear God and to fear me! So much for this being a fair competition. How many horses do the Sanctus have in this race? Still, it's not over by far. The Luis supporters won't take this lying down. What cowardice, Prior! Where's Count Luis? Right, all right, settle down. At this time, I can report that Cal Luis has not applied to enter the tournament. What? He's not even entering? Then what becomes of us? Our entire purpose in this race was to get closer to him. Don't worry. He's definitely paying attention. He's only in second as it is, so we can't afford to ignore this whole production. Sit tight. I'm sure he'll make a move soon. All right, all right. For those Count Louis supporters, you might want to meet our next entrant. A rising socialite, a man of ambition, godless and fearless, the brash young warrior serving Count Louis, Gladell, the Black Hound. <laughs> Him? So he was one of Louis's men. The fallen king embraced sanctism and all its holy tenants, and for what? He was nothing before Lord Luis. Look to the sky all you wish. No god can save you! What our country needs is power! Well, it's not quite all the contenders, but let's get on with the introductions. The great liberal merchant, it's Roger Ward. By war, by conquest, by right, it's Rudolf Krauss. In it more for the gauntlet runners than the throne, it's Lena Caden. Sure to be popular by pledging free drinks for life, it's Loveless O'Shea. Uplifting the beautiful and deposing the hideous, it's Milo Maurizio. Wow, uh, if we lose this, I think the country has some even bigger problems. <sighs> Now, I do believe we have one final candidate. Do we have an Elden Boy present? Come on, huh? let's see a face. What, an Elder? Disgraceful. Is this the only way you could think to distinguish yourself? <clears throat> by the way, the ride you applied with still hasn't arrived. And uh, if it doesn't show up by the time the noon bell rings, 